My name is Alanda Kreener, and this is my Physics 2 lab on calculating the magnetic field of a bar magnet. The purposes of this lab include observing the relationship between magnetic field and observation distance, both on and off axis using a small bar magnet, applying the Biot's of Art law to understand distance dependence for magnetic fields, and developing a model to determine theoretical results in comparison to experimental ones. Important concepts include the concept of magnetic field, which is produced by a magnetic current, the Biot's of Art law, which calculates the magnetic field of an object observed at a distance r with some magnetic dipole moment mu, the magnetic dipole moment formula, and on and off axis magnetic field formulas. A peek into my results shows a distance dependence exponent of negative 3.22 and the predicted versus observed mag magnetic field vectors at 45 degrees off axis from the magnet as seen in Tesla's. First, I did the on-axis experiment to determine the power of distance dependence and magnetic dipole moment. I first had to compensate for magnetic north following the steps as seen below, where the system in the experiment is the magnometer sensor in my phone, and the surroundings are the earth and the bar magnet, respectively. I followed a procedure to locate the sensor in my phone, sliding my phone up and down the x and y axes, respectively, so that I could record distances on the axis between the magnet and my phone sensor for varying magnitudes of magnetic field. We assume here that nothing interfered with the magnometer besides the magnet, that my distance measurements are accurate, and that there were no shifts in my phone position while taking the measurements. As seen in my experimental measurements here, we can observe that the magnometer, when it is far away from the magnet, it measures a near zero magnetic field in the x direction, and the closer the magnometer sensor is to the magnet, the stronger the magnetic field. We can find the distance dependence power in our chart calculated by Excel as the slope of our natural log of magnetic field in the x direction versus the natural log distance from the magnet chart. We see this to be negative 3.22. Since the relationship between magnetic field is proportional to the r magnitude by 1 over r cubed, we would expect this value to come out to around negative 3, so this is pretty good. I then calculate the magnetic dipole moment by setting the dipole moment equation on axis equal to the KRN equation, solving for mu, to get 3.136 ampere meters squared. I followed a similar procedure for the off-axis experiment, compensating for magnetic north again. The system and surroundings here are the same as in the on-axis experiment. I then found the d-perp, which is the distance from the magnet, such as the net magnetic field is around 100 microteslas. I then positioned my sensor at a location d-perp in both the x and y directions from the bar magnet, forming a right triangle. I then recorded the x and y values from the magnometer app and corrected the y value by subtracting the y component of Earth's magnetic field, which in my location is around 50 microteslas. I repeated this process two times to find the average distance from, my, from the magnet to the sensor and the average magnetic field magnitude at 45 degrees off axis. My average distance came out to be around 0.313 meters and my average net magnetic field magnitude came out to be 4.7 teslas. Here we assume that there is no z component. For my computational model, I listed physical constants, created a magnet object, and inserted my calculated magnetic dipole moment of 3.316. I then created a magnetic field function and defined two observation locations for on-axis and four observation locations for off-axis. Then I used the magnetic field function at each of those locations to create magnetic field arrows. I then inserted my observed d-perp distance and used the magnetic field function to create an arrow for the predicted magnetic field at 45 degrees off axis. Here you can see my results. The orange arrows represent the magnetic field vectors at the on-axis observation locations. The cyan arrows represent the magnetic field vectors at the perpendicular observation locations, and the magenta arrow in the top right shows the magnetic field vector for the 45 degrees off axis observation location. We again see here that the closer to the magnet, the larger the magnitude of the arrow. We also see that intuitively, the arrows on axis are pointing in the direction of the dipole moment, while the perpendicular arrows point in the opposite direction, very similar to what we saw with electric fields. It also appears that my theoretical electric field at 45 degrees off axis is quite different than my observed one. Some reasons for the difference between theoretical and my calculations include that we assume that the magnometer is properly adjusted, we assume that my measurements were accurate, we assume that there's no magnetic field contribution from the magnet nor the earth in the z direction, and we also need to acknowledge that there's human error in my measurements and that I was near other technology which also encompass their own magnetic fields. 
if I didn't compensate for a magnetic north in the beginning, then the Earth's magnetic field in the y direction would have interfered more so with my experiment and the values would be skewed. There would have been even a bigger difference between the theoretical and experimental values. Also, if we had two magnets instead of one, we would assume that the magnitude of the magnetic field would be larger and we would intuitively assume that it would be close to two times, but the direction would be the same.